Today, we're going to be creating this particular abstract loop. It's made so that you can actually use different frames of this as wallpapers or backgrounds for posters and things like that. So the first thing that we actually need is to go to our edit preferences and over here, open up the add-ons and just search for the extra curves add-on. So it's called add curve extra object. Just make sure that it's checked. Then you can close it. Now we can press X and delete our default cube, shift A and under curve, you'll see an array of more curves that generally isn't there. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see there's knots and inside knots, there's torus knot plus. That's the curve that we're going to use. Now, before you do anything at the bottom left, you see this particular drop down menu. You can open it and then just change a few of the settings here to get exactly what we want. So I actually want one spin and two revolutions for the shape that I desire. However, if you want a little bit more finer control, you can always go ahead and check the extra options and change the major radius and the minor radius to just get it as you please. Along with that, you can also change the height and just play around till you get exactly what you require. Now, the next thing is that the extra curves come with a bevel applied to it. So we can go to the object data properties over here or the curve properties. Then under geometry, we can go ahead and decrease the depth to zero because we don't need it. Another setting that you could do is instead of using the major and minor radii, you can go ahead and change it to exterior and interior and then just play around with this to get what you like. And I think I'd make this change just to make this 0.45 and the exterior maybe 1.5. So that's more of the shape that I want to go for. Now, of course, keep the bevel down to zero and just tab to go into object mode. Then we can rotate it on the X axis just like that so that we get our shape when viewed from this angle. Now to actually get the lines, what we're going to do is we're going to take a cylinder and wrap it around this. So to do that, we're going to just press shift A mesh cylinder. We're going to rotate it on the Y axis. And before we actually get rid of the cylinder, we're going to open the cylinder properties from the bottom left over there, change the cap fill to nothing and go ahead and increase the vertices to something like 100. Then we can go ahead and collapse the menu and rotate the cylinder on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then scale it on the X axis by something like 20 for now. Now, since we've scaled it, if you actually look at the object scale, it's not going to be one and that'll cause a few problems later on. So what we can do is we can press control A and then just apply the scale. And that way the scale becomes one, one, one. And that's exactly how we require it. Now, the next thing that we need to do is tap to go into edit mode or just go to the drop down menu over here, then go ahead and make sure that we have edge select on. Press one on your numpad to go to the front view and then go ahead and hit B for box select, select all of the edges around the edge loop over there. And you'll see that only half of it got selected. So in order to prevent that, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle X-ray by pressing this button up here. Then again, go back to one, B for box select and just select everything X, delete edges. So now we just have the lines. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other end. So let's just shift over to this end, B for box select, select all of these edges, X, delete edges. So now we just have these lines. We can press one to go back to the front view and just select the top few lines by pressing B and just selecting maybe this many for now and then hit X edges. So now we have a slightly more than half pipe of lines. Now the problem is that since each edge is that long, we can't get it to bend, but we required it to bend. So in order to do that, we can go to the modifiers, add modifier and add in a subdivision surface modifier. And we're going to change it to simple and we're just going to increase it to all the way to six. So now if you actually apply the modifier, you can actually see that each edge has now become just that much. So I think that it's still far too long and it won't be a nice smooth curve. So we're going to go ahead and add the modifier again. So subdivision surface, this time maybe increase it in simple to maybe four and then just hit apply. So now you can see each edge is actually just that small. And that seems perfect. So now we're going to add in a modifier and we're going to choose the curve modifier and then just choose our torus knot as the curve object. And there you should be able to see it wrap around the curve. Now, if at all you see that it's not matching up the size and things like that, you can always scale it on the X axis to increase and decrease the length. So you just have to make sure that you scale it up till it matches up. So if you see the ends are right over there, I don't know how well it's seen, but the ends it's ending over here and over here. I can just scale it on the X axis to get those ends to meet. So if you can actually see the ends are growing, 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 and they perfectly meet right there. And that's good enough. Now, the next problem that you might face is that it's far too wide. So in that case, you can scale everything on every axis except for the X axis by pressing shift X and then just scaling it down and it becomes a lot thinner. Now, the last problem is that you might face things where there's an abrupt edge like this. So to fix that in our curve properties, 
export the torus knot. We'll select the torus knot, go to the curve properties, and just change the twist method from minimum to Z up. So that will fix that immediately. And there we have it. Now this could be good enough if that's what you want, but most of the times you want it to have a lot more character. So to add that in, we're going to tab to go into edit mode again, press one, and this time just select the right edges or the leftmost edges, then press O or press this button to toggle proportional editing, and then just scale it up. You'll see that it's not scaling up too well because it's also scaling on the X axis. So make sure that you press shift X so that it scales on the Z and Y and not the X. So now you can go ahead and just scale it up, maybe scale it up to four. And once you do that, do the exact same thing on the other side so that it remains symmetrical and the edges actually line up. So let's scale it, shift X, four. And that's more or less the shape. You can go ahead and play around with this even more. Maybe you can make this central region slightly smaller as well and just play around with it to get a shape that you're happy with. All of that is your preference. Another thing that you can do right now is that it's all facing in the same direction. You can make it go through a 180 degrees or 60 degrees shift box select just the edges and then go ahead and press R X 360 degrees and just scale it up so that everything feels the twist till the end but the last little bit does not so something like that should be fine so now you have it going through a twist as well so now when you actually tab out this is what you have now you can go ahead and just readjust everything scaling on the X and now the fat portion is on the inside and the thin portion is on the outside. I don't want that. So to change that, we are going to have to press GX. And if you move that, you'll see you can adjust which region the fat portion goes to and which region the thin portion goes to and all of that. So now I feel like the fat portion is a bit too fat, which is why it's covering up the inside portion as well. So you can go ahead and just adjust all of that to your liking. So you can press C for circle select and just select out the edges and then scale shift X and just bring it down a little bit and then see how it is. So once you have that done and all of your scaling is right, you can go ahead and actually convert these from just being wires that can't be seen and is in nothing in rendered view into actual geometry. So to do that, we're going to use geometry nodes. So we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows over here. Click and drag to open a new window. Then go ahead and change this window to the geometry node editor. We're going to press new. And now we're just going to convert it from a mesh to a curve and back to a mesh. So mesh to curve and then search for a curve to mesh. And for the profile curve, we're going to search for a circle. And we're going to have to make sure that it's a curve circle. Before we plug it in, we can reduce the resolution to something like 10 because that should be more than enough for what we're doing. And it'll not be too intensive on the laptop. Now, the problem is that the radius is far too large. So we can reduce the radius to something like 0.05 and then just take a look at what it looks like. So let's switch off overlays and see how thin or thick it is. So if this is how thin or thick you want it to be, that works perfectly great. But if not, you can go ahead and play around with these till you get exactly what you desire. So I think I'm going to go with 0.04. So this is the shape that I want. And we're going to have to give it a material. So we're just going to search for L. Set material node. Place that after the curve to mesh. And we're just going to choose the default material. And once you're done with that, change from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Go ahead and from the top down menu, select the default material. Then play around with what you want. So we're just going to change the base color to this nice blue. And to actually see the change changes happening, we're going to have to switch to the rendered view by changing it up over there. And along with that, we're going to just reduce the roughness a little bit. So we're going to make it 0.3 and we're going to increase the metallic to something like 0.8. Once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and change the background of the world. So let's go to the world properties over here and just change the color to the same blue, but we're going to just reduce the color down to almost black. So just reduce the value to somewhere like that. Now we're going to go ahead and take our light and duplicate it. Shift D and then Alt G to clear its location. Then grab it on the Z axis and just move it up. Grab it on the X axis and you can just play around with the position of the different lights till you get something that you are happy with anything that you desire. So I think that's good enough for my lighting. Now we need a plane for it to sit on. So I'm just going to go for a UV sphere. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and change it to shade smooth. And I'm going to hit control five to give it a subdivision surface of level five. But we're going to go to the modifiers and change the render also to five. And now I'm just going to scale it up, maybe something like 50 and then grab it on the Z axis and just move it down till it's right underneath the torus. So right about there. 
similarly, I'm just going to grab it on the y-axis and just move it back a little bit. And I'm happy with this positioning. Now we actually have to place the camera. So let's press zero to go into our camera view. And now you have to place the camera to a position that you like. So let's switch on overlays, select our camera, switch off overlays after that. Go to our camera properties, go to the viewport display and change passport out all the way to one. Then let's press N and go to view. And here, just check the lock camera to view and then press N again to remove that. So now we can actually play around by moving the camera till we get a location that we approve of. So I think this location for my camera looks fairly well. Press N again, uncheck camera to view, and there we go. Now we can give our base sphere a new color as well. So let's just create a new color for it. We'll go ahead and increase the base color to complete white because the value generally starts off at 0.8. And then we're also going to increase the roughness all the way to one. And that generally helps it look more white. If you want your actual render to be completely white, you can go down to the color management in the render properties and change the view transform from filmic to standard and then it'll actually be white. But for now, I'm gonna keep it at filmic and I'll go ahead with this itself. I also feel like at this angle, the sphere is too far back. So I'm just gonna grab it on the Y axis and just move it back to about there and then G Z just so that it's underneath our shape. And to light up the back, I'm gonna take our light, shift D, alt G and then alt G, then grab it on the Y axis to just move it back. Somewhere about there looks good. So once we have this, we can go ahead to our render property, switch on ambient occlusion just to get the shadows a bit nicer. Switch on bloom as well. And in case the bloom is too intense, go down and just decrease the intensity 0.02 maybe and clamp it down at 4 as well so that's fair enough and as for the animation we can go ahead and set all of our animation defaults so the frame rate is going to be 30 frames per second we're going to make this five seconds long so 150 frames would be the end the output will be whatever folder you want to save it at double slash saves it wherever the blend file is saved file format is going to be ffmpeg video with our encoding container set to mpeg4 and our output quality set to perceptually lossless. Once you're done with that, on frame zero, go ahead and select our torus. So make sure that you have the cylinder selected and press I, rotation. And then you can go to the last frame, which is gonna be frame 150. And there you can just rotate it on the X axis by 360 degrees, hit enter, I, rotation. So once you do that, you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping and you can just take a look at what it looks like so you can switch off overlays and just take a look at it so once you feel like your animation is working perfectly rotating it on the x-axis allows it to rotate and in fact if you don't want this to be pointed upwards when you're creating your wallpaper, you can just rotate it on the x-axis to a position that you think suits better. So maybe something like this, where it's more covered here and the open region is over here. Doesn't matter, it's completely your own creative freedom. So you can set this up to whatever you feel like. And when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and just render animation or else the image in case you want it to be a wallpaper. So with that, I really hope you learned how to create something of this sort. And you can use this technique to create various other creative and innovative animations, wallpapers, whatever it be. So be sure to send in whatever you do create. And until next time, stay creative.